Good day and welcome to episode 29 of Safety Talk with myself, Pandelia Lefteru, and Gert Hendricks, our very own safety coach here at FTS Safety. Uh, Gert, how's it going? Good and self. Very good, thank you. Another good week. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Gert, we've got uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of companies, mm. a lot of people uh, who struggle to get their employees to, 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 to follow the rules that they put in place for safety. Yeah. Um, I know we've covered this a lot in previous uh, mm. episodes and stuff, but I wanted to ask, what would you say to someone who says, my mm. employees are not following the safety rules? You know, Patrick, it's actually an ongoing problem and it is not unique. I think every single company out there battles with it. But And we have heard this so many times where this management or safety officer walks on the floor and they say, why aren't you wearing your safety shoes? We've been talking about this so many times. And, and, and they constantly are bringing on, are concentrating on the negative stuff in, uh, regarding safety. And But I don't believe that's the correct way of implementing a culture within your company. Explain that again. What do you mean by that? Well, to implement a culture, a safety culture in your company, you need to, first, before you can resolve an issue, you need to identify an issue. And that is what it's all about. I personally believe you can ask for anything in life. It's just how do you ask? I can't agree with that. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. but, but again, I'm saying the frustration is, and I've been through it. I've had it before. Even, even in FTS and basic rules that we want to put in yeah, place, yeah. where you go, you'll do the meeting, you brief everyone, cool. And when you're around, they do it. Yeah. And when you walk away and you stop looking, suddenly you go back and masks are off or yeah. uh, gloves aren't being worn or specs aren't being well worn. And yeah. so, so again, so that actual frustration that businesses and our leaders and, and, and safety reps and safety officers are, are feeling, I mean, yeah. how do they actually address that? Well, there's various of elements, and I would only like to touch on two. The firstly is you need to have the correct PPE. It needs to be comfortable, and people need to want to wear it and not, not uh, having uncomfortable situation, not being able to do their task. That's but fair. the second thing which I would like to address and, and you, uh, talk about now is that we need to make it personal. You know, I'm, uh, we need to talk to the people as if they understand what it's all about. And to make it personal, you need to mention them to, regarding their own safety at home. How do they manage safety at home? Talk to them and tell them, listen, do your family know where you are? Can you get hold of your family? Have you, uh, uh, have you ever spoken to your family regarding health and safety? Yeah. And, and I would like to ask that question to you, Patrick. Is you've yeah. got a family? I do. You love your family? Very much. Have you ever sat down around a table and say, listen, what are we going to do when the stove catches fire? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> but only because we've had this conversation before. Yeah. My different was different. We actually had a visitor who came from overseas once. Yes. And we were sitting inside the house and yes. we've got our normal, we've got the entertainment area. Then we go to the bedroom section of the house. We lock the security yes. gate and we're all in the bedroom section. In that particular house, we were on the second floor. We had burglar bars on all the windows. And when I went to lock the door, this guest from overseas like hit a panic. And they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, we're locking the door. Yeah. Uh, she's like, whoa. What happens if there's a fire? Yes. How am I going to get out? And we stopped and we looked at them. Me and my wife looked at each other. And we're like, geez, we never thought about this. That's it. Okay? And at that stage, we didn't have a fire extinguisher in the bedroom section of the house. Yes. Okay? We didn't have an evacuation plan on how we're going to do it. Exactly. After that conversation, I went back and I was in FTA safety at the time. And I hadn't even thought about it. And I yeah. was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to handle this? So as yeah. a result of that, we now have a fire extinguisher in the bedroom section of the house. That's yeah. easily accessible. We kept a crowbar hidden in the bathroom so that yeah. in the event of a fire, we can crowbar the window yeah. and climb out of the window because the, bur the burglar bars are blocking, uh, crowbar the burglar bars because the yeah. burglar bars are blocking the window. And I, I must be honest, once I had that in place, I felt a lot more secure. We knew if there's a problem, that's what we're doing. If, the, yes. if that area gets blocked and we can't go through that exit, this is the other backup plan. Yeah. Um, and actually, I do like that question. I think it's something maybe we should do another episode on it, is what questions to ask in terms yes. of home, in terms of fire safety, security. Um, yes. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, only address these issues when it's too late. When it's too late. Um, and whether it just be saving your, uh, your, 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 your property and from, mm. from damage by having a fire extinguisher, or even worst case, potentially saving a life. Saving a life, yeah. I mean, these are, these are big, big deals. It is big. Okay, deal. so you asked that question. Let's bring it back to the workplace because I have an opinion on this. Okay. 
And unfortunately, this is where I bring in my business side. Okay. And, and, and I think the biggest battle here, this is actually a, a double-edged question because mm. this question is, yes, the question what you're actually asking, or what I'm actually asking is, how do I get my employees to take safety seriously? You actually saying they need to understand. They need to understand. Okay. Which is actually, it's not a once-off. It's not a answer the why, explain it to them. It's actually, that's where your repetition comes in. That's yes. where your meetings come in. That's where your inspections come in. It's, you actually have to create ha behavioral habits that enforce creating uh, that culture mm. of, of uh, keeping safety as a top priority. Yeah. Um, and but you must just remember, once the employer have asked the question, what are you doing regarding safety at home? The employer is then emphasizing that his employee is responsible for safety in, the, in his home. And then he can say, just like you're responsible for safety at home, yeah. I'm responsible for safety here. Yeah. 100%. So the next time that you ask him, listen, you cannot smoke here. There's a designated smoking area. He will understand why. Okay, next so time you do evacuation, well, we've got he will understand why. And that's the thing. Then when you do your repetition, because safety is, 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 is repetition, the moment that you start doing that safety, it will be, they will participate in it and not yeah. fight it. You know, you, you remind me of another story that also is worth sharing on this. Yeah. Uh, one of our clients in the construction industry, <clears throat> he managed a team um, mm. of, of workers who worked at Heights. They were the guys on the scaffolding, I can't remember exactly what they did, maybe they are installing windows, I think they were actually doing form scaff, I think they were actually doing concrete. Okay. But anyway, long story short, he complied all the rules, signed all the paperwork, yeah. it literally mitigated, all his due diligence was done. Yeah. If anyone fell and got injured or died, him and the company were in the clear. Yes. They had their training, they yes. did the talks every day, everyone did everything by the books, they signed it off, and yet, when he wasn't looking, guys weren't wearing their harnesses. Yes. Okay? And it genuinely, genuinely frustrated this man. In fact, yeah. he's still a friend of mine. Uh, and Warren, if you ever watch this, I remember this like it was yesterday, <laughs> this conversation. Is, um, and he told me how he eventually got through to them. He said he had the main oak that everyone, he wasn't, the guy wasn't a, um, uh, uh, an authority in the business, but he was like, everyone looked up to this guy. He had yeah. been in the team for the longest. He was yeah. well respected and all that. And this yeah. was the guy who wasn't always was like, hey, and I, I don't have to worry. I, yeah, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm touching it. Yeah. And the oak literally would swing off the thing without connecting his harness. He said what he eventually did is he pulled the guy aside and said, okay, cool. What would happen if you had to fall from this height? The guy said, I'm going to fall and break all my bones. He says, and? He said, I'm going to be dead. And the guy laughed. Yeah. yeah. Said, I'm not afraid of death. Then he asked him this question. He was lucky enough that that guy told him a few weeks before that he was buying a bicycle for his son for yeah. Christmas, and that's what he was saving up for. And he said to the guy, okay, cool. So if that happens, who's going to buy your son a bicycle? Yeah. Okay? And he said the oak actually like, looks stunned, as if to say. And then he said, well, who's going to look after your wife and children? Yeah. Okay, who's going to take your kids? Who's going to pay their school fees? Who's going to buy that person a bicycle? He said that he didn't expect this. But it hit the guy so hard that the guy started crying. Yeah, okay? and it makes safety because he real. Had, he had never thought of the consequence of anything happening to him. He was only thinking as far as, ah, yeah. man, strong, not afraid. <laughs> he hadn't thought of the consequences of his children and his wife, what Absolutely. had happened. Absolutely. He was actually said one more thing that I can't say on here, um, which was a little bit ruder. Okay? <laughs> but he really put the consequence of what would happen if yeah. he was not around. Um, and I think that was a, a great message. And I think that's something that we overlook a lot of uh, managers and employees and leaders mm. they drive the rules and I think to reiterate we're saying without driving the implications the what why. are the implications the why what are the implications mm. of being disabled yeah. what are the implications of losing your sight oh, what are the implications of losing your income yeah. what are the implications of you dying okay yeah. and if we can figure out the language and the jargon mm. uh, to express that in a meaningful way to employees who it's literally, literally out of naivety yes. or ignorance. It's yeah. not out of... I don't, nobody chooses to make a mistake. Yes. Nobody chooses to ignore rules. Yeah. It's literally something else feels more important at the time than wearing the glass, the, gla the, the, the yeah. safety specs, or then wearing the safety shoes, yeah. or putting on the, the hard hat. Okay? Yeah. Um, but if we can figure out how to create that connection, and, and also specifically in South Africa, we've got a... a an uncanny ability to believe that nothing can go wrong.
Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I, I always draw a lot of our, um, where I think we're headed. I look at Australia, I look at UK, and I look at America. Mm. You know, they are so strict. In Extremely. The, okay? But it's, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's coming from home. Yeah. People will look when you're driving and they see someone not wearing, their kids not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. They will open up their window and go, hey, your what? kid hasn't got a seatbelt on. Yeah. Okay? We see that in South Africa and Oaks just carry on driving. That's it. Okay? They've literally created a culture of safety that where they've encouraged it and you are frowned upon if yes. you do not work safely. You are frowned upon if you do not practice safe practices yeah. at home and at work. Um, so, so I think that's something, there's something there that probably needs to be I know a explored a bit more. I know it's a long route for us to get to that level. But it, it starts with management and safety officers to change their mindset and not playing the police officer, the enforcer, but rather the educator. The safety coach. The safety coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Okay, that's a good one. Okay. Well, I'm happy with that. Um, I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, in a nutshell, if you are pro having problems with employees following the rules that you've put in place for safety, we believe that the right thing to do is to try and uh, create that association of safety at home, protecting mm. your family, protecting your loved ones, and using that same methodology in the workplace. Um, uh, if you have any questions, there's no such thing as a silly safety question, so please put your question in the comments below. Um, we hope you found that useful, and thank you very much.